are back with another small town series and today we are showcasing Pocomoke City. Yes, we are and we want to say hello to all of Delmarva, but particularly to the viewing party being held at Dockside Waterfront Dining in Pocomoke City. Hey everyone! Yeah, I see you waving back. Yeah, we see you. <laughs> don't think we don't. We do. We see you. <laughs> so glad you got together, and I think you're going to really enjoy. You know, one thing I love about doing these shows is learning so much about these towns that we have on Delmarva. Yeah, because there is so much history and mm -hmm. little things that you might never know if somebody didn't bring it up. Exactly. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's begin by learning a little bit about the history of Pocomoke City, the earliest documentation of what is now Pocomoke City comes from the late 17th century when Colonel William Stevens, who was a staff officer to Lord Baltimore, established Stevens Ferry along the Pocomoke River. 1865, it was incorporated as Newtown, but was reincorporated as Pocomoke City in 1878. Now, not long after that, the railroad was built, connecting Wilmington, Delaware to Cape Charles, Virginia, across the Pocomoke River at Pocomoke City, <laughs> and that's what helped aid the town's growth. Yeah, in 1921, the old Pocomoke River Bridge, or Market Street Bridge, was built. The 275-foot double-leaf bascule movable span was built to meet the need of increased highway travel on the eastern shore in the 1920s and 30s. Now, the bridge was renovated in 1989 after a 50-foot section of it collapsed into the river. In April of 1922, a fire destroyed much of the business district in Pocomoke City. The fire reportedly started in a stable early in the day and was fanned by high winds. The telephone exchange, post office, Worcester Democrat office, and two hotels were wiped out. Fortunately, the town was able to quickly rebuild. Now, the second half of the 20th century brought much economic growth to Pocomoke City. The poultry industry rose, NASA, the U.S. Navy, the Coast Guard, all helped with continued growth by bringing jobs to the area. As a matter of fact, Pocomoke is home to a growing industrial park that plays host to defense contractors, aerospace engineering, as well as plastic fabrication. Yeah. Uh, now, the Pocomoke City Industrial Park is actually where the great Pocomoke Fair takes place. That's something else I learned. Uh, dating back to 1901, it was originally held at the corner of 2nd and, ba and Broad Street in Pocomoke City. The fair celebrated the fruits of harvest, handiwork of farm wives, the farmers' blue ribbon quality livestock, and horse racing. In 1930, the fair became a victim to the Great Depression. It would eventually return some years later and continues today. It's held the first week of August and there's so much going on. If, you, if you've never been, you need to go. You need to go, absolutely need to go. There's another huge tradition in Pocomoke City, which was one of the first ones I learned many years ago, mm -hmm. and that's the Christmas Parade. Yes. One of Delmarva's largest nighttime Christmas parades always held on the first Monday after Thanksgiving. More than a hundred units from Maryland, Delaware, Virginia participating. It attracts thousands of spectators. This year will be the 48th year for the parade, and I will never forget the year that I was driving the float for the radio station and I locked the keys in the truck. Uh-oh. We didn't make the parade. We didn't year. make the parade. <laughs> I know that one year, several years ago, there was actually a bet between the mayor of Pocomoke and the mayor of Baltimore about who could have the bigger parade. Pishaw. I don't remember who won. But so we'll claim it. We'll claim it, yeah. Well, as you can imagine, there's plenty of recreational opportunities in Pocomoke City as well. The scenic Pocomoke River is the perfect backdrop for outdoor activities. The downtown nature trail begins on the city dock at Cypress Park and winds around Stevenson's Pond to Winter Quarters, landing for a total of 1.5 miles. The trail is enhanced by several sections of floating boardwalk, exercise stations, a 57-foot pedestrian bridge, 260-foot fishing pier, gazebo, and canoe launch sites. Isn't that gorgeous? I'll tell you what, one of, one of the first times we took our kayaks out was on the Pokemon Yeah. River. Absolutely loved it. Gorgeous. Now, we've talked about the Pocomoke River during our small town series before. The 66 mile long river flowing through Snow Hill before it reaches Pocomoke City and enters the Pocomoke Sound of the Chesapeake Bay on the state line between Maryland and Virginia. The Pocomoke River, one of nine rivers in Maryland designated as wild and scenic by the state. This river was a vital resource for the natives that settled along the banks. They were known as an Algonquin tribe. The Pocomokes used the water for food and the trees for cover. Turning to education, Pocomoke City is home to an elementary school, 
a middle school and a high school and then there's the school that is now a museum the Sturgis one room school is on Willow Street but it was originally located on Brantley Road it is the only African American one room school in Worcester County retaining its original integrity from 1900 to 1937 one teacher taught grades one through seven. Now, after being purchased in 1996, the Worcester County Historical Society restored it and renamed it the Sturgis One Room School Museum. And it's not the only one. You're gonna find another museum at home built not long after the end of the Civil War. The Coston House, built in 1870. Back when the town's name was still Newtown, members of Dr. Isaac Coston's family lived in the Market Street home for more than a century. When the home was threatened by demolition in 1974, a group of spirited citizens formed the Spirit of Newtown Committee, bought the house. Dr. Coston would go on to become the first mayor of Pocomoke City in 1888. The Coston House Museum's furnished with Victorian style furniture left behind by the Coston family. The grounds of the museum also include the Hall Walton Memorial Garden. And it's beautiful. If I you've never seen, seen it, it. you've never seen, seen it. No. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the inside of the house is gorgeous yeah. too. There's a lot of the clothes. They look behind clothes and furniture, all kinds of things. My it's goodness. all a museum now. You can see how they live. All right, as if we haven't already given you enough reasons to hang out with us today, we have a few otter reasons we'd like to try. Mac and Tuck at the Delmarva <laughs> Discovery Museum. These cuties are sure to put a smile on your face, but they're just one exhibit you'll find here. Katie took one for the team to check out some of the others. <laughs> we are taking a look at Pokemon's past with a visit to Marva Theater on Mar uh, Market Street. So much history, yet still going strong today with a solid lineup of entertainment. We are looking forward to opening the curtains on this little gym. I'm Katie Zarelli here at Eastern Shore Lanes, and coming up, we're going to tell you why this is a great place to spend your spare time. Hey! <laughs> oh! And she hits oh, a spare, oh, get it? Oh, oh. Spare. spare. The fun's just getting started. In fact, fall fun is alive and well in Pocomoke City. We're going to run down the lineup. And of course, Pocomoke has your shopping covered. We'll stop by a place where you can find a little something for everyone with a heavy focus on fabulous flowers. And then Dockside has the deliciousness covered, affordable, family friendly and fabulous. That's how you can describe this spot. Oh, and the view. Yeah, go ahead and plan for a stop here too. <laughs> All I'm hearing is that Pocomoke City is popping. We're looking forward to this <laughs> small town series adventure. The Marble Life, stay with us. The following segments in today's Delmarva Life Small Town Series are brought to you by the City of Pocomoke, the Downtown Pocomoke Association, and Worcester County Tourism. Take a look at this stunning shot out of Pocomoke City. We often talk about the beauty of this incredible peninsula that we are so fortunate to call home. There is also so much to learn about this place, and wouldn't you know it, you can do so right in Pocomoke City. Yeah, at the Delmarva Discovery Museum. Now, the museum opened about 11 years ago and has continued to bring in new exhibits to both educate and excite its visitors. Delmarva Life's Katie Zarelli being one of them. And let's just say, after meeting real-life otters and touching a snake, her life hasn't been the same. Mac and Tuck devouring their mid-morning snack is enough to make even the busiest person stop and stare. This is just one of many exhibits to see and experience at the Delmarva Discovery Museum that's been open for 11 years. And they wanted something to bring people to downtown Pocomoke and I think that we hit it out of the park. Step inside and you've entered a world of learning, imagination and discovery. Stacy Wisner is the museum's president and CEO. It's something I'm proud of. I want to finish my career here. Let's be honest, how could she not? She gets to spend every day with these two. Mac and Tucker, the stars here for sure. And they're only where the excitement begins. You won't miss the life-size steamship. You'll see all kinds of native animals in the touch pool and you'll live the wharf life with watermen. The exhibits here are hands-on and fun. You can do everything from captaining a sailboat to hand-tonging for oysters to crawling through a beaver lodge. You can even touch Piggy, an albino corn snake. Oh, oh God. You gonna crawl up my arm? He's about seven years old. He'll live to about 15 in captivity normally. 
and he's super friendly. So uh, most people don't get to hold Piggy, but they can do the two finger touch. Stacy and Squad are constantly striving to make their existing exhibits better and add new ones that'll turn heads. We just shut up and listen. We listen to the kids. Um, some of our, our best ideas that we've gotten are we've asked children when they come in, what's the coolest place you've been to? Where is the neatest museum or discovery center you've ever been to? And, and we learn from those. From that shutting up and listening, they realize there's one question that those who stop in continue to ask. Most people, when they come in, they don't know what Delmarva means. So the very first thing we have to do is educate them what Delmarva means where the peninsula is, where the waters are. Even those who do know what Delmarva means, those who have lived the Delmarva life through and through, can find something here that'll make their eyes light up and maybe teach them a thing or two about the place they call home. Here, They don't realize what's here. They think, we're, you know, a small little museum, but we're 16,000 square feet. We're, open, we're only closed four days a year. We're always open. We always have events here. Um, and we're well worth the drive. It's also a museum that works with others in the community. So we partner with the Sturgis One Room Schoolhouse and the Costin House Museum. The goal is for you to end your visit at the Delmarva Discovery Museum feeling just a bit more joyful than when you first walked in and for you to return with family and friends. But I want them to leave happy and pleasantly surprised. And I bet if you ask Mac and Tuck, they'd say they want that too. Right guys? And Stacy says the museum also has a discovery lab that schools can bring students to for field trips. And I have to say, Jimmy, I, I got to hold little piggy, yeah, the yeah, snake, yeah. and feed Mac and Tuck. Oh, my. Not there's, everyone gets to do that. There's nothing like hands-on. No, there's not. Yeah. Best way to learn. Best way. And when you think about going to the movies, this might not be the image that comes to your mind, an old-fashioned marquee with only one or two titles showing. But that's the movie theater in Pocomoke City. Residents in and around the area know it, love it, and choose it to see the latest films. And get this, the Marva Theater is more than 90 years old. So, lights, camera, action. Here's Del Marva Life's Katie Zerilli. Since the Roaring Twenties, the people of Pocomoke City have picked one place to view movies and shows. The Marva Theater Performing Arts Center has been a staple on Market Street for more than nine decades. And we celebrate that all the time, so we're very proud of that. We've been through a lot. Crystal Matthews has only been the theater's executive director for the last year, but she recounts the tale of its beginning like she was there. So 1927, um, we opened, and it was a silent theater, a vaudeville theater. Um, and then later on in the 60s, we added the, the screen and started to play uh, new movies. It was refurbished in 1996, a $10.2 million, 10 year long project, lengthy but necessary. You know, the, the fabric on the walls, the walls were chipping, um, things were just kind of falling apart. It was very much in disrepair, um, complete electrical. All the ceiling tiles were actually redone and each one of those is refurbished and put back. So every little detail. Nowadays, it still takes you back in time while showing you something new. You get the history. You know, you get to walk in here and it's, it's charming. It's, you know, um, the way that it's set up, the walk-up theater style. And it only costs you $5, which you'll pay at the old-timey box office before entering. Crystal says there really are so many things that set this theater apart from the rest. These chairs are just as cozy as could be, and the popcorn is out of this world. I will say that our popcorn is the best around, and you can ask around. Uh, the Marva has the best popcorn. It's one of my favorites, so there's that. You can catch a flick here the first and third weekends of each month. You've got to have a dose of patience because it does take a few weeks for Crystal to get the latest releases. She says for most people, though, it's worth the wait. I definitely feel, I feel like they'd like to see it here first if they can. And movies aren't all that are showing. The Marva Theater is also a venue for live stage shows. They partner with community organizations to bring different performances in and wow the crowds. Live theater is just, uh, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, it brings you, it, it wakes you up, it, it makes you feel alive, um, and it's, it's something that connects people. In fact, looking ahead to this theater's future, Crystal wants to make more of those connections. You know, musicals and um, the ballet and bringing, bringing new stuff in, even magicians and comedy acts. So we're, we're open to that. We're looking to expand um, in that and also with the youth. So we want to have a year-round youth group that we do. Um, we're working towards that now. 
And she can be confident that in all of this, she has the full support of folks around her because this is a place that patrons are passionate about. It's, it's cherished very much by the community. Still, always, yeah. If the theater itself was a movie, it would be a story of longevity, rebirth, success, and smiling faces. And the best part is that the end credits aren't coming anytime soon. Just an incredibly beautiful building. If you'd like to check out what's playing this month, all you have to do is go to DelmarvaLife.com. They did such a wonderful job of restoring that theater. It took yes. a long time, yeah. but they did it right. They did it right. Lovely shot right here of Pocomoke City <laughs> all pumpkin out. Uh, Pocomoke is a town that celebrates each season as a community. Their event calendar booked from early spring to midwinter. Yeah, so right now, as you can imagine, they're loading the wagons with hay and warming up the apple cider for their upcoming fall festival. Delmarva Life's Katie Zerilli, a ferocious fall lover herself, has the details. Kara Lacey brings the people of Pocomoke City together like it's her job because it is. This is what people are coming to do for fun, and this is what I get to do for a living. Born and raised right here in the friendliest town on the Eastern Shore, she's proud to be the events and downtown coordinator. Keeping the calendar full throughout the year is about more than just giving folks something to do. For one, it boosts the economy. It brings people downtown. It brings people to the shops. But also, it's a way for the city or the downtown merchants, even the chamber, when they get involved, to give back to their community, to have something for the residents and neighbors of Pocomoke to do. Most everything is free at these events. Some requ require a small charge or donation, but for the most part, everything's free. And it's a really great way to unify the community. Event season kicks off in April when they put on their downtown Pocomoke Spring Festival. Also starting in April and running through September, their fourth Friday street festivals. Basically a monthly neighborhood block party from 5 to 8 p.m. Their summer events include their three-day Cypress Carnival in June, concerts in the park, the Great Pocomoke Fair, and the annual boat docking challenge. Right now, we're just days away from the celebration of this season. The Pocomoke Fall Festival happens next weekend. It is a great autumn-themed event. Kids can come out in their Halloween costumes, trick or treat with the Passport to Pocomoke game in participating downtown businesses. There's also a kids costume contest on stage, as well as sidewalk vendors, food sales, hay rides, pumpkin painting. There's really so much to do for the entire family. These two blocks of Market Street will be closed to cars for the fall festival, and these street lights will be decorated with fun seasonal ribbon. Something about the magic of the leaf changing time of year makes this event a fan favorite. I am one of those people that loves fall. As soon as the weather changes, I get giddy and excited and people just love the cool weather, the crispness in the air, uh, the flannels, the boots, everyone loves it. And we've got all that at the Downtown Pokemoke Fall Festival, the hay rides, the pumpkin painting, the Halloween costumes. It is, to me, the best time of year. The only time of year that could perhaps top it is Christmas time. Tough to choose, right? We light the town's Christmas tree. We have a bonfire, horse and carriage rides. Mr. and Mrs. Claus come out. And the best thing is everything's free, even the food. So it's a, it's a way that the city and the mayor can give back to the residents of Pocomoke. This giving back isn't something they do because they have to. They do it because they want to, because they love this town and the people in it. It's not just a job for us. It is it, it's a way of life and it means so much more because Pocomoke's a part of our heart and it's also our career. So we give it everything we have and um, I hope that the people see that. See it for yourself soon. The fall festival takes place October 12th. And as you may know, Kara often comes on the show to discuss many of the events taking place in Pocomoke. She says they just keep getting bigger and better every year. And Jimmy, when's the last time you went on a hayride? It's been a while. I need to go. You need to go down to Pocomoke need City. need to go down to Pocomoke City. Let's talk a little flower power, man. No, no. We're not <laughs> going to take it back to the 60s and 70s. We're going to take you to the Enchanted Florist, a shop that's been around for 27 years and has been located in Pocomoke City for the last 10. So we sent Katie there too. She found out that flowers aren't the only thing making the store blossom. 
If you've never been to the Enchanted Florist here in Pocomoke City, you might think it's just a place to find beautiful bouquets like this one. And it is. But if you step inside, you'll see they've got so much more. We have um, gifts for just about anybody. If you're looking for something for a guy too, we do offer that. Um, we've got country decor and we've got everyday items, you know, if you're not into country. Uh, we just started carrying the Innis Fragrance, which is actually from Ireland. It's a really cool scent, and our biggest addition right now is a Simply Southern. Um, all of our ladies are going crazy for that. And their Nora Fleming line has been a hit, too. Jennifer Procaccio's business is 27 years old. It was first in Chincoteague, and then they moved here to Pocomoke 10 years ago. If you stop in to treat yourself and know exactly what you want, great. If you're like me and sometimes struggle to pick out the perfect gift for someone, also great. Jennifer is more than happy to help you out. It's something that, you know, makes you feel good because they're happy and you know that that gift they're giving is going to put a smile on somebody's face and we wrap everything up for you and put some pretty tissue paper in there so you don't have to go anywhere else. You know, you can just go straight to to your friend's home or, you know, whoever. Um, we also sell greeting cards too, so that kind of helps. Now, keep your jaw in place when we show you these flowers. It's a challenge, right? They're stunning. This is the only spot in Pocomoke to get fresh flowers, and these bouquets are put together with careful hands and artistic eyes. Creativity makes the best. You've got to have a spark. Um, you never want to make anything that's going to be dull. You want to shine bright. I wanted to know what Jennifer's flower of choice is. Turns out, though, that's the toughest question I could have asked. I love Gerber daisies and hydrangeas, roses, lilies. There's, there's just so many to pick, it, it's hard. So many different options to express sentiments that are sometimes beyond words. It puts a smile on people's faces, um, especially, you know, for like a birthday or something. Um, and then, of course, we have funerals. Um, and so helping them get through a sad time, because um, believe it or not, it does put a, a little bit of sunshine in a really sad day. You can only imagine how crazy this place gets when Cupid comes to town, but they're always up for a Valentine's Day challenge. It all happens in basically in one day, and we are crazy busy. It's great, though, because each year we're pushing ourselves harder and harder, um, but that's definitely a day full of some love. And when love really blooms and it's time for the I do's, Jennifer and gang play a part then, too. They decorate about 40 weddings a year with their flowers. She works one-on-one -on -one with brides to make sure they get exactly what they've been dreaming of. The weddings are a lot of fun. Um, you, you get to see somebody on their special day, you know. How heartfelt is that? But special day or plain old regular day, there's always a reason to pop into the Enchanted Florist. You're going to love us. We're going to love you. And whenever you're looking for something, we have it. Where you'll find flowers, fun gifts, and most importantly, friends. I love looking at flowers, all the flowers we saw in right, there. Right, right. I don't have a favorite because I don't know what they're all called, but when they put them together in those arrangements, I'm just so impressed. Turn gorgeous. Yes, gorgeous, yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous. The Enchanted Florist is open Monday through Saturday. If you'd like to know when they're open or find out more about how you can order the flowers, just go to delmarvalife.com. Yeah. Time to roll over now to our next Pokemoke stop, the Eastern Shore Lanes where competition and family fun combine. 16 lanes that have been around since the 60s. DeMarvel Life's Katie Zerilli visited the alley to learn more. And she also begged for a bowling lesson, which she got. And the jury's still out on whether or not her game's gonna improve. Since the early 60s, the people of Pocomoke City have frequented this bowling alley on Market Street for family fun. Uh, we're one of the few sports where the grandfather could come out and participate and have a good time with his grandkids. Eastern Shore Lanes is a 10-pin bowling center with 16 lanes for you to try your best shot at a strike, a spare, or maybe just knock down any pins at all. Well, practice helps. Uh, concentration's good. Take it from Tommy Fitzpatrick. He's been here for a good while. We've been here a long time. Uh, I started here in 1971 as a short order cook. 
I became the mechanic in 78 and I bought it in 1986. Since its inception, it's been a spot where folks can make the best of memories, whatever the occasion. Very famous for our church outings. We do fundraisers, special events, corporate outings. Christmas parties. Those serious about their skills have plenty of opportunities to get competitive. Monday night, Peterson Point League, which is our biggest night. We have a couples league on Tuesday night and mixed leagues on Thursday and Friday. And probably our crown jewel is our kids league that we have on Saturday morning. Over the summer, they also run a free kids bowling program. And this past summer, more than 2,500 kids signed up. Not bad for a town with 4,500 people in it. Whether it's the youngsters just starting out or those learning to bowl later in life, Tommy says watching their progression in knocking down those pins is powerful. I love seeing the new bowlers come in and the enthusiasm when they do get the first strike, the first spare. And it's fun watching these bowlers mature and get better at the game. That's one of the things I really like. Now I've never been one who has been known for my bowling skills. So I'm hoping Tommy, you can tell me what I need to know to get better. Well, Katie, the first thing you've got to do is find a bowling ball that fits you properly. Uh -huh. You should always use your two middle fingers and your thumb should go all the way in. So let's take a look. All right, this and is a nine. That's a nine pounder. It's a perfect fit for perfect. Katie. Okay, here we and go. remember, you should always follow through towards your target. Follow through to the target. I'm nervous, Tommy. Hey. That's a great shot. The gamers in the family are well taken care of here, and the snack bar has got all you need to keep you fueled up. When looking ahead, Tommy has no doubt that Eastern Shore Lane's longevity will continue to last. The future's bright. Um, I have a really, really great young staff. I have a, a new young manager, that uh, Brandon Evans, that's taken over for me in the future, and he's going to do a real good job leading us forward in the next, hopefully, in the next 30 years. Basically. I'll frame it like this. When in Pocomoke City, it's a business you've gutter visit. Oh my, and it should be no surprise that Tommy mentioned the food. He's from Philly. He said he brought the cheesesteak to the alley and it is a fan favorite. You gutter, you gutter down try there. It. Yeah. And try it out. Bless your heart. <laughs> oh my. You know, we have done a whole lot of exploring today. What say we finish off our Pocomoke City party with a good meal? Oh, well, sounds good, Jimmy. What are we having? Liking that idea? Mm -hmm. Here's where we're going Dockside Restaurant, which is just exactly what it sounds like a wonderful place to eat right on the river. Yeah, it's a spot you can be sure the whole family will find something delicious. Here's Delmarva Life's Katie Zarelli. Dockside Bar and Grill in Pocomoke City can be classified in many ways. It's the spot where you can sit and eat with a stunning view of the water. It's your saving grace when you need a night off cooking but still want to consume good food. It's the place you grab a drink with your buddies on game day. Whatever your pleasure, the restaurant's heart beats by one word, family. Yeah, <laughs> not a lot of Funny sleep. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It's uh, been an adventure, that's for sure. Husband and wife duo Jamie and Caitlin Evans run the restaurant. They've owned a coffee shop in town for a while now and decided this was the next step. They've been leasing the building from the city since spring and opened up in June. It's, of course, a big task, but one they're loving tackling together. He is the one that keeps me on the straight and narrow as far as all business things, numbers and and what direction we need to go in and then I'm kind of the aesthetic food design idea person so we really work out well as a team. There's days that I would love her more than I've ever loved her being in here just seeing the things that she's able to do and the gifts that she has. Say it with me everyone. Aww. The Evans have two kids of their own and so they knew they wanted to serve food that will satisfy both youngsters and adults. Um, I think it's just a really easy, American, family-friendly menu. Yeah, and I, I, I think for <clears throat> to expand on that, the, the family-friendly is the, the big part. Um, again, with us having kids, we understand when you go out to eat, it can get very expensive mm -hmm. as a family of four. So we wanted to make sure that it was good food in a price point that a family could come out, have a great time, and do it more than once a week. And no worries if you've got a picky eater in the bunch. We don't have grilled cheese on our menu. But we'll make it. But we'll make it. You we know, have cheese, we have bread. We have like grilled cheese. We have cheese and we have bread, so if somebody wants a grilled cheese, we're going to make it. All right, we're back here in the kitchen with Jerome Brown. Jerome, I am told you are Jamie and Caitlin's right-hand man, if you will. 
That I am. That I am. So why do you love cooking so much? Uh, well, it's just kind of one of those things I fell in love with growing up. So I just kind of fell in love with it, kept it going. That's awesome. And when people eat your food, how do you want them to feel? Hopefully that it's good. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, good criticism is, is always welcome. But, um, we do understand that everyone is not going to like everything. Uh, but I'm hoping that for the majority of the people, they, they actually feel that my food is, is amazing. Cool. And what are you going to fire up for us today? Uh, well, today we'll be doing our full steam ahead, which is actually our clams, and then I'll also be frying up some Brussels. Sounds delicious. It should be. All right, I'm going to let you get to it. All right, have let's fun. have fun. As important as patrons being wide-eyed and excited when plates like this come out is them feeling right at home each and every visit. Kind of Everybody kind of knows it, but that's the, what we want this place to be. When you come in, we, we know your name, we know your family, your family knows our family, um, our kids run through here and, and you know the patrons know who they are and vice versa, my kids know who they are as well. Being able to serve families right here in Pocomoke is a privilege. I love this town. I have seen and witnessed this town um, be probably one of the most giving, mm -hmm. kind, supportive towns Absolutely. I've ever been through. The restaurant's future even screams family, as the Evans are hoping to hand it down through the generations. Hopefully we're we stay married. <laughs> you know, working with your partner, we're, we're hoping we stay we're married. Good. Um, we're but yeah, you know, I think for me the future is I, I want to see my kids sure. own this. Sure. You know, I got a, a, again, they're five and two. So we got, a, we got a long way to go to own this for them to take over. But, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we do a great job and yeah. leave a, an opportunity mm -hmm. and a legacy for them. For now, though, they'll just take it one day, one dinner, one dish at a time. Mm. Oh, and by the way, just in case you need any personal testimony, just talk to anybody that's at that watch party right now at Dockside. Just want to say hey, guys. Yeah, save me some of those Brussels sprouts, okay? Tell you what, for someone who is new to Delmarva, you sure are finding out all the little nooks and crannies of I, every town. I love these small town series. Yeah, it's yeah. so much fun. And I remember the first, my first day in Pocomoke, just doing two of the spots, and I came back and I was like, this is so great. I got to feed otters. <laughs> I got to go bowling. You held a snake? I held a snake. Held a snake. I was nervous about that at first. What? She's like, do you want to hold Piggy? And I'm like, never held a snake. <laughs> and then I became attached. You, you pet Piggy. Yes, I did. That's I didn't wonderful. want to let him go. Well, I hope you get to do a whole lot more. Me too. Fired up. Love them.